Hello fellow promptists. As you can see, I'm here at the moment on the community feed on the new tab. I've hit the upscale. I'm just going to scroll through so you can see what people are creating at the moment while I explain the video to come. Obviously you can skip this bit if you just want to get straight into the live stream. But I feel a little explanation is deserved. So the footage you're about to see after this is a live stream I did on Discord yesterday for a masterclass called um, Controlling Canvas or Canvas Controlled, one or other. There were a few technical issues at the beginning, so I'd kind of started my presentation before realizing about the technical issues, so there was a little bit done. So you're kind of getting chucked in and kind of halfway, well, not even halfway through, just a, a couple of minutes through. So I basically go back over a few things that I'd just done and I try and explain the rest of the functions with the canvas tool on Leonardo AI. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, feel free to leave any comments. I did cut out some questions and answers at the end as well because it's just a static screen and the chat wasn't recorded so I can only apologize for that as well but I want to give you kind of the best presentation I can so I hope you enjoy this and I will catch you in the next one yeah right howdy folks how's it going fellow promptists um I'm not sure like how much I've i've missed or done but um i'll do a quick start again so what i'm doing here basically is i'm going to just run through show you how to delete things how to mask things and then i'm going to merge a couple more images into this one as well um quick rundown of the keys up here we have the pan key so with that one basically you are free to move the screen around because the screen can really get quite big as you can see and it's quite easy to lose your image in in all of that so that the yeah, pan key is how to find your images uh, we'll zoom back in here i'm just using a mouse button but if you don't have that luxury then these two buttons you got the plus key there to zoom in and the minus one there to zoom back out and over here we've got the select key now with the select key this is where you get to move your box around now i don't mind moving it around because i can just click the undo key and it will put it back there but this is good because basically what was what i did here before the presentation cut off i didn't realize it had cut off so i I just carried on talking but what i'd done here is i used the erase tool um, used a couple of various sizes here just to get the detail in and i've just erased the wings that were on this guy here and we just to show you well i was trying to get rid of them but that unfortunately didn't actually happen with the prompt so anyway what i'm going to do here quickly is snap that back into place so this is the the prompt i run it's just the same prompt i used to make the image apart from a few keywords at the beginning because i didn't want to create more more characters so what i'm just going to do here very quickly is just copy that one i'm going to delete that one quickly and i'm just going to put in back background and because all these ones that i developed before unfortunately as you can see they just kind of kept the artifacts there so i'm going to cancel that one and hopefully we'll just get some background in here now and while that's generating i am using stable diffusion 1.5 generating at four images each time uh, I'm using basically the 512 by 512 and the one to one. I've got guidance scale of seven. I'm not doing any tiling and I'm using the Leonardo scheduler. So the, I'm basically not doing anything you can't do on the free plan. So if you're on the free plan, you can do anything you, you see me do here today. Now we've got that one generated. Unfortunately, it hasn't put any background in there on that first image. And this is where you can, can kind of run into a little bit of trouble with the canvas. It can 
get what's the word token intensive sometimes and you've got to remember the canvas tool is in beta as well so things in beta don't always run perfect but if you like that anyway so i'm i actually prefer the wings like i had before so what i'm going to do is just do a couple of undos and you'll you'll hopefully see the process see i went around the edges first and so this was the original wing and i actually prefer that to what i just did with the erase tool but that was just basically just to give you a demonstration of what, what can be done so that's all undone now so what uh, another thing ooh, I always forget that <laughs> and I should say if you've been using the erase tool whenever you've finished using it your first instinct should straight away be to go to the select tool because you'll you'll probably end up doing what I just did which is just making a big erase but again there's always these undo buttons here and redo buttons oh I should also mention I've got the snap key on uh, this helps you keep this box aligned to the edge of your image so you don't create those wonky edges but what I'll do now quickly is just demonstrate the mask tool. So we we'll zoom in a little bit here and we we'll just say go over go over the hat here. So I'm going as quick as I can. Obviously, you have a little bit more time when you're doing it yourself. We'll bring that one up a little bit now. Yeah, the rest of that. Get around those edges and pop. I mean, if you watched Malachi's stream the other day, you will probably have got a lot of this anyway, but I thought I'd go over it again very quickly. And what I'm going to do here is literally just type in make red, and hopefully, we'll get something that resembles a red hat now. So Give it just a second for the generation. Oh, there we go. It's completely changed the hat, but we've definitely got a red one. So I'm just going to press the space bar key here, and that will switch over to the pan button and bring it up a bit so I get access here. And we'll, oh, there we go. Nice little gnomey hat there. Oh, it's not red, but I actually like that. I think I'm going to be sticking with that one unless the next, next option is any better. No, no. So we're not having a red one because I actually like this one quite a lot. So we'll keep with that one. And as you can see now, it is it, even if I move this box away, it has now transformed that hat into something quite different. Uh, what I'm going to do now is get rid of that one. So hopefully, anyway, that, yeah, that hopefully like just gives you a, a very quick rundown of, of how to use the masking tool and erased tool if you really wanted to get rid of things it's actually let's let's do the erase tool again quickly let's let's just get rid of this little flower that's that's at the top there and in fact i won't even use the prompt. i'll just press the space key which gives a space which allows me then to hit the generate and hopefully it will see that i'm just trying to fill in the gap here and big shout out to grizzle picks for that one um because I didn't realize you could just press space until he said it in the chat the other day. And there you go. See, we've erased that little flower. It's left us a nice little bit of background. We've got a few choices there. I actually like the third one that blends it in the best, I think. So we'll accept that one. And as you can see, we've now got a gone flower. But the main part of this masterclass was to take this a little bit further i mean what you could do now with just this image is you could move this little box to the side here what i'd do personally is get this erase key again yeah that's a good size and just go around and get rid of the straight edge it doesn't have to be perfect try not to like create new straight edges but just really and if there's a big bit here like maybe just take a big chunk out here it'll just help any images you create merge merge into the background there without creating straight lines but what i'm going to do now rather than just work on this one image is i'm just going to quickly hit over here and grab this guy here Boom. see we've got a new new image there so i'll just click on that one and we'll move him just over to there 
and I'm going to upload another one here. And we're just going to click that one over here so we can have just a couple of companions. But at the moment, I think they're a little bit too big and menacing. So what I'm going to do here is just quickly shrink that one down a little bit. Maybe keep him out there and hopefully we'll merge something in here that will that will convince us that it was part of the image all along. And we'll shrink this little guy down here a little bit. And maybe put him on the on the floor looking at in there, maybe a little bit higher there. Like I said the composition could be completely up to you, but what I'm gonna do now is just again move this little box out of the way and we'll Get rid of that straight line on this image here. And we'll get rid of the straight line here. And over there. So we're kind of prepared and a bit future proofed. Now, if I add too much of maybe a, a detail like this wing in here what i could end up creating is a few little artifacts and stuff in here so what i'm going to do for just a second is we're going to grab all of those images so, so i basically just left click stretch over we've got all those images so now that these are all locked together so if i move these around now they move as one unit and if I stretch them up a bit so we can make them a little bit bigger, they all, all move as one now. Now, now they're disconnected again once I've clicked off and you can move them all around individually. But what this will help me do is find a part there. Hopefully it will pick up enough of this, but I'm, I'm actually, let's bring that one in a little bit more. I think I'm being a little bit too over ambitious there. Because you want to leave enough of the original image left and so it knows what to do with the prompt that I used. So we'll fill in that. Oh, see, yeah, it's found those feathers there and try to see this is what I mean. If you get a little bit too much of the detail you don't want, it may create artifacts from that. And it has. It's created these little feathers here. I mean, it's not too bad. Oh, we've got a cat there. I, I never prompt for cats. I mean, I actually think that's the best match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept that one. But because I don't now want those feathers in there, I'm just going to get rid of these feathers. With that erase key. We've still got enough image now created and as like I say it created a little bit more here so hopefully now I'll take a bit of my own advice move this down a little bit so we can get rid of those feathers there should have taken rid of these straight edges as well and we'll hit that generate button again hopefully we'll see these images merge even better this time oh it's almost tried to create a little bear face or or a badger that's pretty cute actually i quite like that as you can see we're getting a bit more of a mergey oh i'm not sure where these animals are coming from I, i've got I me mean, i've got from folklore there that maybe could be causing a bit of an issue but i think we'll stick with that one with the little with the little bear artifact fact there before i go any further let me just click on the chat and make sure everything's running okay here All right, excellent. Seems to be at least the, the yeah. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't talking to myself again. <laughs> but, right, we'll get that one in here now. And again, as always, like I said, I like to get rid of these these straight edges. And it destroys some of the image you've just created. But oh, and we also got a little. I didn't even notice this little guy here. This little like armadillo. What I would concentrate on a minute ago was this thing up here. So. All right, we're, we're getting some nice little little additions, actually. As you can see, just slowly moving around, getting what you like in. 
I think that one, give it a little bit of blur up front. Even a little bit too ambitious there. And again, I like to get rid of these straight lines. Straight lines are your enemy in the canvas tool. Oh, oh, that's really nice. And see, if you give it enough of, of, of your image as reference, it really can do well. Unfortunately, we've got a little bit of right in there, so I probably won't use that one. Oh, I like that one as well. So it's either one. No, I think it's going to be three there. So as you can see, and this, this I think will gear more towards those of you out there that really want to compose images you know you, you've found a few images that you've generated on your personal feed and you're like well what can i do with these these images i think they'd look good together well th this is my advice of what to do put them together make a make a nice collage or um, a nice battle scene you know not nice landscape scene Again, get rid of those edges Oh, well, <laughs> okay. Like I say it can be quite amusing. Well, it it throws at you sometimes. I'm 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 gonna yeah. No, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take from folklore. I think out of the prompt because I think that is what's causing the image at the moment. Because most of the rest of the prompt is just there to give it a bit of realism. Yeah, I don't like any of those. So we're gonna cancel that one and run it again without from folk. Floor. but again you see here that see this is a good example see i'm only actually giving it a tiny little bit of input to fill in this massive square oh i like that one no i think we're going for free on that one so we've got a winner there but as you can see with the snap key on i've managed to keep these nice straight lines all in line with my with my beginner images so what we'll do now is come up here in fact, I'm not even going to get rid of that little straight line. But another benefit with getting rid of straight lines is sometimes even when you do get a good merge, you can almost kind of see where it's it's left a straight line in there. So I'm going to try and hurry this along now. I think number yeah, I think number one I like the best there. Come on. Oh, that one's going to take it just a, that snaps taking it as you can see just above there so i'm just going to knock that one down to eight and see if i can get it in line is that lined up yep i think that one's lined up right what i'm going to do here actually is again get rid of this prompt because i want it to try and recreate this tree here so literally all i'm going to put is three and we'll, I will get rid of that big straight line there, actually. Yeah. Hopefully it will take enough of the reference from this tree here and create us a nice, a nice bit of tree here. Aha, perfect. Oh, again, I think number one's the winner there. Although, all right, the snap hasn't quite worked out as I'd hoped because I've got a tiny little see if i can um get that up there yeah you can see where it's, it's created unfortunately a little bit of a lump there but th those things if you do create them they can get rid be gotten rid of in post-processing so what i'm going to do here in fact if i go just above that line with the snap back at 16 because it's a little bit better I'm just going to hopefully fill in this little bit now without it creating too much because sometimes when you do this you will get like just white lines across the top but hopefully if I catch it early I'll be able to expand upon it yeah nice I think that's done it yep number one again so now if as long as we keep to that snap we will recreate now a nice a nice um, straight image Let's again just get rid of these straight lines here. Uh, we don't need a tree anymore. So what I'm going to do here again, I'm just going to 
use the the grizzle picks method of pressing a space and that it will sh- i've got more than enough reference image for it to to fill out without anything there we go oh yeah i think four blends the best there let me just come over to this corner here and finish off that last little bit not even getting rid of the straight line because there's some actual nice straight lines behind it anyway so it should Except, brilliant. Now we'll come over here and just finish this this top bit off over here. Any of them will do. Move this one across and. Yeah, if I fill that out there, any any of these little bits may get filled in. Well, they will get filled in as well, but I'm hoping it won't cause too much of an issue because I'm only leaving a few little bits there. I'll be getting rid of this this again anyway to get rid of the straight line in a second. Oh, got something interesting coming in there. Oh, actually, I quite like that one. Although, like I say, I'll probably be getting rid of most of that in a minute anyway. But what I'll do now, actually, is bring it down here. In order to merge these ones in nicely, oh, should we take more from that side or that side? No. Now we'll go from there. This may cause a bit of an issue, like I say, because I am trying to fill in quite a large gap. But I just want to come and check the chat again. Am I oh, I'm missing a corgi in the picture, am I? All right, let's get back and have a look what we've done there. Can't see the corgi. I mean, there's a little something poking out just here, and there's a little guy down here, but I'm not seeing a corgi. I'll have a good look in a minute. Ah, there you go, see? Even even with me getting rid of the line. See, this is what will happen quite often if you don't get rid of the line. But because I've got rid of it, it's, it's not happening as often as you might see if you don't. Oh, that one's nice. Ah, there we go. See, we got two with straight lines out of that one. But at least we got two that were pretty decent. And we can now fill in that. Ah. See, I can see a little bit of a line forming here. So what I'm just going to quickly do is smudge out all of that. Get back in line here and we'll hit that generate and like i say all of this as you can see the the prompt is blank so it's relying almost entirely on the reference image so a massive shout out to to grizzle for that one like i say because this, this this little tip has helped me massively because sometimes having a prompt in here can can really mess up what you want i think that one goes okay sorry i do get carried away sometimes with talking not actually doing i do apologize so let, let's try and get this done nice and quick because this is a least interesting part yeah that one will do is that gonna all right we'll, we'll see so I'm just hoping it's going to line up on this side. If not, we, I may have to come out again and build up just a little line up this side. Perfect. Let's have a zoom in. No, nope, we have a nice straight line there. Excellent. So bring that one up. Actually, we'll leave a little bit of this one down here as well so you can grab a little bit of that reference. Get rid of that straight line there. And I'll just make that one a bit jagged up. So hopefully we won't get any more of those straight line generations. And I'm not sure if jagged is a word, actually. If it's not, I've coined it. It's my word. <laughs> oh, quite like this. It's not really a butterfly, not really a hummingbird, but it's a nice new 
kind of mytholo mythological creature, maybe. Oh, we've got kind of a moth fly here. Oh, it's on fire. That's actually pretty cool with with the with the dragon looking at it. I feel like, hmm, do I want to keep that fire? Let's see what number four brings us. Oh, oh, that's actually pretty good. That is pretty good. But no, I actually think we'll have a little bit of fire there for the for the dragon's sake. That was a happy little accident. So we come up to the top now. Again, we'll get rid of these straight lines. And hit that generate button. Oh, a nice bit of diamondy stuff coming down there. Oh, I like that one. I like that one as well. All right, so we've got two usable images there as far as I'm concerned. That one and that one. Zoom it out a little bit. Yeah, I think that one adds to the brightness that's coming in here. I mean, let, let's say, well, actually, yeah, thinking of it, let's say, you, for example, you did actually want to add something into your into your image there. Um, let's maybe put, put an owl, and we'll see if we can get an owl in there. Now, I wouldn't definitely necessarily recommend at the canvas tool for creating images, but you can sometimes get a little something there. So he's mid-air there. Oh, bit of a, I don't know, headless. Aha, aha, there we go. Yep, number three, look. As you can see, so now we've got another little bird here. So as you can see, we've really added to this. Um, so we've got a few hidden creatures here. So we've got the little, I think that's that's like a, a lamadillo or a sheepadillo. And we've got our little little cuddly bear here. Got a butterfly over here. What else did we get? Oh, we got a fire here, which was a nice. Oh, ah, see, oh, yeah. If you ever accidentally do what I just did and move your image, don't panic. Just reach over and click that undo button, and it's it's all fixed. So we'll come back up here, and we will just finish it off. This last little bit in here, and we don't want another owl. So, boom. Owls. Yeah, I think number four there finishes off that image rather nicely now all right we may not have the greatest ratio here but we've definitely got some nice images that emerge all right there does almost seem to be a line going on here so this could be a good place to maybe experiment with the masking tool a little bit and bring it up nice and so as big as it goes yeah that's as big as it goes just kind of squiggle over this bit where it seems like there's almost this straight line and get this here and we will generate and hopefully it'll just merge merge the image in a little bit better there we go accept that one Ah, brilliant, brilliant. Got a few there, I think. I think number three there. And we'll just finish that one off there. And yeah, that's already looking much better. I don't like. I don't know whether anyone else saw it, but I could. 
it's not like you can see a straight line, but you can almost see where it was square. But now that's that's gone. So another great use for the masking tool. Really helps blend the images in. I hope you're as impressed with that little image as I am. And you can see what we I think we got that done relatively quick once the technical issues were done. But the next biggest question is how do you get this image into your personal feed? I get that question quite a lot. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to mess up the stream, but what you... Oh, yes. Oh, almost forgot. One of the biggest things you need to do when, you, when you're happy with your image is click that download artwork. And that should go to your download files and you've got it saved now because if you were to leave the screen or refresh the screen, you, you'd lose all the changes. So... You definitely don't want that to happen. Now, if I click over to here, go back to... Yes, that's clicked over. Excellent. So we'll go to image generation now. So I was just mucking around earlier. So chipmunk eating chips, that's my kind of go-to, just to test things out. But what you do now is you come over to image to image, click on image to image, and we'll uh, just go to my downloads here click on that artwork that we just got and hopefully will it, it may not match see this is a problem because of that wonky aspect ratio lot i got i may be maxing out what leonardo can do here uh i'll put the init strength all the way up to nine and i will paste most of the prompt there like i said i won't use the uh, I think it was Dwarf, Pixie, Imp, Elf were the four words I used to get the the little guy there. So I've taken those out and we'll just use the rest of the prompt. We'll add the negative prompt in there. But as you can see, again, I'm using Leonardo's scheduler. So there's nothing here you can't do for free. This is only going to allow me to create two images at this aspect ratio. You can't go any higher than that. So we'll see what these two images bring. Probably, yeah, I made it in that. You probably want to use the same model that you use to create the images with and i used rpg i used leonardo's style would we'll try it with we we'll try it with um with negative prompts on and if we don't get too too bad an image i mean you can always turn those off as well but there we go so it's not see not exactly exactly perfect because we are using um a wonky aspect ratio if i could if i tried a little bit harder and put that into a 16:9 ratio or you know if you put it into your standard uh three four ratios and that kind of stuff it would work better with the leonardo models but as you can see you've now got your image there that you could you can apply your upscales to and all that good stuff but also if you go back to your personal feed there you go you see they appear right there on your personal feed for people to peruse at their leisure. But I'm hoping that's the rundown. You know, I mean, if you've got any questions now, that's that's my presentation done. So I'm, I'm hoping I've covered everything. And at least with, with what Malachi's done and um, Hikaru have done, then you put all that together and you should have a pretty comprehensive guide to to running the canvas tool oh excellent brilliant okay phew so i, I i'm so sorry as well i kind of rushed through that or i was a bit shaken but the technical issues there did throw me through a little bit of a loop <laughs> but yeah hopefully i've gone now through so now hopefully now you know how to put an image into the canvas tool how to erase from that image how to add to that image how to merge images and that's another great thing with the canvas tool it, you can use it for any image on your hard drive Right, so if you've got a like say a family photo that you want 
take it into the to the canvas tool have a little play with it and it's yes not just for ai generated images i actually turned myself i put a picture of myself in there and put myself into a suit of armor you all using the um the canvas tool so it's great fun it really is right so i i'm i'm trying to keep up i'm just looking for questions here uh well sort of the negative acts more of a guide let's see AI. yes yeah the negatives aren't on absolutely perfect if you look at my negatives you will see that there is a lot of um should we say repeated things like just maybe slightly different terms for those for those repeat and some and in some cases it's straight out re repeated because it's a good way to weight things and my my negative list pretty much maxed out i mean there are plenty of people that will run with without negatives and still get great images so it's not something you absolutely have to do but feel free to pinch that one oh t-shirts added i added that one before a t-shirt design because when i was trying to create a t-shirt design it kept creating t-shirts with it so i put t-shirt in there so it would just give me the design without it being on a t-shirt <laughs> so that that's a new addition um ah sorry if you're doing a high in its strength image to image the space prompt trick work ah it works there too excellent thanks um quiz appreciate that one so there you go yeah so in fact we'll run that one again quickly now why not without so we'll do that and we'll just and we'll see if we get better a better outcome than i did with having my actual prompt in there so this would this will be a good comparison actually oh yeah no that is actually much better that's much closer to to the original image so again massive shout out to grizzle picks there At least I'm assuming it's good. Wait, let me actually read it properly. It is Grizzle Picks or Clicks. God, you, why do you have to put it in writing like I can't read properly? <laughs> I've always just, it's always been Grizzle Picks in my head anyway, so I apologise if I've butchered your name there. Um, there's a few things I've learned here that I can use. Excellent. Uh, well, and again, like I say, uh, so sad I saw only the last 15 minutes. Oh, that's that's OK. Um, I think I covered a lot in that last 15 minutes anyway. So you probably caught most of it. Um, at the moment, getting one one precise character is a little problematic. It will probably be a big feature when it's resolved. Oh, you responded to somebody else. Sorry. And uh, da da da. Oh no! I don't think you messed anything up there, are you? Like I say, I'm pretty sure I'm, I had a few technical issues my end as well. Like I say, this was the first first stream for me, so so like I said, there was bound to be a few little uh, a few little niggles. Uh, put yourself into a suit of armor. Cool. Plans on putting the dog into medieval battle armor. Why? Well, I accidentally did that when I was making a chihuahua. It would be take way too long to go through my images a long time ago, but yeah, yeah, I managed to get a a really cute chihuahua into uh, some battle armor. Um, it's a specific way to get more horror images. I'm looking to generate a B B E G for B and uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So I don't know what the the B B E G is but yeah Dungeons and Dragons campaign um so yeah, it's not something like I'd want to show necessarily on a live stream just in case I did, did create something a bit too gory it's, it's definitely not encouraged because obviously we want to keep the discord a bit more family friendly um but yeah if you're looking for horror stuff literally f think of the words like like horror you know gruesome grimace fangs um you know vampires it, like lean into that kind of that kind of terminology and um i'd recommend as well possibly using leonardo diffusion because i tend to be able to get oh, i hate to use the word but uglier you know you, you like if, if i if 
In fact, I'll, I'll do a very quick, another very quick demonstration. I'm going to take out the image to image. And I'm literally just going to put so, Pixie and Elf and what was the other one? Ah, and Imp. So I'm just literally, that. that's going to be my prompt. Um, I'm not you. yeah, I will use Prompt Magic version 2. And we use it, so as you can see, we use an RPG. Click on that again to get the right resolution. Sorry, this shouldn't take too long. But it's, it's a good little, oh, actually, I can do it straight away. Um, I, I forget I can queue stuff. I'll sit there and wait. And we see we're running that exact same. So that was RPG, and we're running the exact same thing through Diffusion. And again, this should, just shows the power of the, the models on RPG. Literally, I just put four words in there. <laughs> look at those images. Look. I mean, an upscale would would. In fact, let's just do a little upscale. Why not? Just to show that would sort that. One. And as you can see here, we've got very similar images. But you see, it's knocked those those soft edges off. It's made it, you know, more rugged. So if you're looking for, you know, that that again, I hate to say it, but that more kind of ugly effect, the wrinkled, the grizzled effect, then then my suggestion would definitely be switch to switch to Leonardo Diffusion. Right, let's have a quick look at this uh, upscale. Yeah, see, Clear, cleared that up very nicely. So, sorry, back to the questions now. Um, yes, I bet it's on the internal. Oh, wait, that's all. You'll respond to someone else. If I want to correct a hand, uh, this trick function the same? Yes. I mean, it's always a little bit trickier because AI doesn't do hands and feet too well. So, yeah, as long as you don't mind like running a, a few tries yes i've used it to correct hands faces ears lips eyes um yeah pretty much anything you if you as long as you don't mind chucking a few tokens at it you, you can pretty much fix anything in in um in the canvas tool i went to the kitchen for the part where the guy explained how to copy picture from canvas to personal feed yeah, basically, all you do there is um, you make sure that you've downloaded your image from the um, Canvas tool. Then you come down here, you click on image to image, and you put your image in there. You turn the init strength or the initial strength all the way up to the max and run your prompt without any words. Just press spacebar once and it will light up the generate bar. You generate that and it will. It will generate images that are extremely close to the to the image you put in here, and that then puts them into your feed. I hope that was a quick enough explanation. Um, remember to mo promote your YouTube channel so people can follow your tips and tricks. I'll oh, thank you for that, Sagan. Yeah, I don't. I won't feel. Yeah, you can you can catch me on YouTube. Uh, I'm pretty much exclusively running content on Leo. There, are, I do use a couple of other websites as well just to enhance the stuff i make on leo as well but yeah um because i'm pretty much exclusively on leonardo ai that's the only ai in generation um tool i really use i mean there is there is one more but i'm not going to mention it because they're not leonardo um Look, Paul, yeah, look, Paul Novels blurbs, yeah, exactly, exactly. You've got it, you've got it. Um, so I came in on the tail end of it, but really enjoyed uh, seeing the merge mask. And yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, like I say, I mean, and I, I've learned a lot of these tricks as well from um, watching other people stream, to listening to what other people have said in the chats and stuff as well. Obviously, I've come up with a few little things myself. But that's that's the great thing with a bit of trial and error. You you I mean, that's just my way as well. There's, what is it? No two way more than two ways to skin a cat is the old saying. So yeah, literally, there's no wrong answer when it comes to canvas. You really can put your own flair into there. And 
Oh, sorry, the chat just jumped around a bit there. So I'm trying to, I'm trying so hard to keep up. Um, missed the part. Uh, what did Grizzle recommend to get the image closer to source? Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, um, Crowley. That that was um, using the prompt. Sorry, let me just get back onto there. Basically, yeah, just doing that. Just go into the prompt box and just press spacebar once and you can generate without a prompt and then it's it's working almost exclusively from your from your start starter image and your negative prompts um, yeah i'm glad I, I, I will have to put a corgi into some full plate at some point yes <laughs> Don't forget to. Oh, thank you, uh, Ben. That's much appreciated, man. Oh, and Bell's him in there as well for the backup. Champions one and all. So there's an overhead. Oh, no, that's. Da, da, da. Sorry, I'm really trying to scan. I can read pretty fast, but there's a lot of comments here. Um, yeah, if you at me in the comments, that would definitely help, actually. <laughs> uh, what a difference, Jinkies. I'm really behind, I must be, because I think that's when you're looking at the, the uh, two models. Yes, yeah, like I say, know your models. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me go back for anyone who's just joining. These two, or these four images will run using the exact same prompt. It's just these were run with RPG 4.0, and these two were run with Stable Diffusion. Um, stable Diffusion, of course they were. <laughs> with, sorry, Leonardo Diffusion. And I actually, like, Leonardo Diffusion is forgetting anything realistic, I prefer RPG, but anything non-realistic, I really do love Leonardo Diffusion. It it's just blows me away every time. Um, yeah, dream. Um, yeah, the dream shaper models are pretty good for for that kind of stuff as well. They lead into more kind of the animation style um, as well. Not animation, no, like cartoony anime. You know that 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 kind of style. They they're really good models for that. Some couplets and blah blah blah. Nailed, 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 nailed. Sorry, I'm really. <laughs> so I'm looking out for the for the bright comments now. Well, you you've added, added me because otherwise I'm never going to catch up with these comments. <laughs> All right, I think. Please, it, like, ah, wait. Aren't you going to introduce more fine-tuned models in the future? That yeah, the I mean, it's not obviously it's not me personally. The Leonardo team uh, will certainly they're working on them right now as we speak. So there will be plenty more. It's like we got the update for Dream Shaper not too long ago. So you got the Dream Shaper 3.2 model, and we got the updated 3. Point, uh, version 5 model no dream shaper yeah dream shaper version 5 and there's another new pipeline in the way as well oh, some of the results we've seen from that as well if you're on twitter um there's a yeah a few images from the new pipeline over there and i think um au may have posted a couple as well in uh, the dailies possibly i'm trying to so I'm just going through to look now because I want to advertise that as well. Personal spaces, that's what the daily theme for today is, personal spaces. And it, that will be changing probably in the next hour or so. And as long as AU's okay, I'm up for it. Um, nice, yes, yeah, share those images. Share those images out at the end here while we're getting through the questions. Because like I say, basically that's the end of the presentation now, folks. So if, if your time's precious to you, and you need to be somewhere else. I'm literally just answering questions now. So you please go about your day if you need to. Get creating some images, you know. Use what you've learned. Uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, go on. Let's see some images before we go. I don't mind sitting around for a few minutes. If 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 as long as there's people in the audience, I'll sit here and well, I'll sit here for another say ten minutes for just for some questions. And of course, this can be edited out of of any recordings to keep keep the recording nice and uh, concise. <laughs> uh, what did you say your YouTube channel was called? Yeah, it's called D Does AI. It's exactly the same as as um, on here. Yeah, I tried to keep it consistent. Oh, there you go. There's Ben in with the link. Thank you ever so much there, Ben. Yeah, it's growing so fast at the moment as well. Like, I mean, I only started it, what, four months ago when I first started getting into AI. And yeah, no thanks to the support of wonderful folks like yourself. It is, it's really starting to grow fast now. Oh, can I show you? Oh, um, I, I don't know if I can show you my best generations. Because that, that might be a little bit hard to do. Um, but I will go to my personal feed. I'll go to upscale because I consider anything I upscale, you know, so like I want to keep. I'm pretty sure there's no NS. Let's turn that one off just in case. But I don't purposely set out to create NSF, NSFW very often. But occasionally you do you do get the odd, the, the odd image. So I'll turn that one off. But... So, I mean, I do, like I say, anything here I considered, you know, good enough, good enough to upscale. So, I mean, you'll see a lot of these with for the T-shirt design competition that's on at the moment. Although I, I, have, I withdraw any of my entries uh, as a potential winner. I think it would be unfair for a moderator to win the competition. So, or at least the, you know, lead, lead moderator. So, yeah, no, I... Uh, or here moderator sorry to be clear but yeah um so yeah pretty much any of these oh this has been touched on briefly as well by some people oh look at that look ben mclaren look this is one i did for him this is where the control net and edge to image comes into its own you basically would it does it show the image no it doesn't um but basically i'll make a image in canva with text Bring it in, use edge to edge, use a prompt, and that's how I get text into my images. Uh, I mean, none of these are gory. Uh, uh, there's no gore to come, but there is some horror themed stuff just coming into play now. But I don't go for gore, so it's just, you know, horror characters. There's not nothing really that should be, that a child shouldn't be able to watch, you know. I mean, it's. I mean, actually, with the, yeah, the, these ones I was pretty proud of. I've got to say, I, again, just used in nice, simple, simple prompts. You know, I mean, I've gone the main bit of the prompt here. You could take out most of the rest of that after mummy, but it's like ghost, uh, gnome, uh, vampire, zombie, and mummy. Seeing, seeing what the AI decides to make of it. Uh, yeah, I went through, like I say, a little stint of of doing slightly slightly horrific stuff, and I was quite proud actually because I, I found it really hard to get fangs. I was finally getting fangs when I started adding like vampire and stuff into the into the prompts. Uh, so I scroll down past the the horror stuff, and there, yeah, this is this is where you see where I started really. Oh, here we go. There's a nice little dog for for the dog lovers out there. All kind of armored up and stuff. This isn't the one I was actually talking about. That one would be way down in my feet. But I mean, all right, these ones were pretty creepy actually. If you if you don't like clowns, you probably wouldn't like those ones. But and there we go, look, the very best moderator of all, Ruby Noodle. Yeah, and I, I, like I, said, I do. I like a bit of my fan art as well. Um, Superman is my by far my favourite superhero. Uh, a little bit of Groot here as a little pixie. So I'll jump back into the chat. Sorry, let me have a look. Make sure no other questions. I'm I'm indulging now. I'm self indulging. And that's where I decided to cut the video there. So I can only apologise if you were burning to hear some more of those questions. But I can only encourage you to try and 
join in with the live streams on Discord. Hopefully there will be some others being released as well at some point, because I know there's been some other live streams on there that have been recorded. But anyway, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like, hit the subscribe. There'll be plenty more content coming your way. Until then, I will catch you next time, fellow Promptists.